Hare Krishna, welcome to our continuing series on celebrating Kartik. And today, again, we're very much blessed with the presence of Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj, who is going to uh, conclude his parikrama of the Braja Dham by taking us to the various villages of the Ashtashakis. Uh, so, I'm not going to uh, spend some time, more time introducing you again, Maharaj. Uh, those who haven't yet uh, seen and, and uh, our, our earlier shows, uh, you can still click below in the description of this program and get a full description of Maharaj's services, which are voluminous, <laughs> more period of time. Um, and we've already visited Radha Kund, and we visited Govardhan. And now we're going to continue our Braj Mandal Parikrama and visit uh, some of the villages, or um, all of the villages, or, or at least some of them, of the Ashtar All of them. All of them. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Well, without further ado, I'm going to sit back, and I'm going to be one of the audience here enjoying this uh, spectacular uh, immersion in uh, Braj Lila. Uh, during this auspicious Kartik month. So, Maharaj, it's all yours. Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you. Can you see Can you see my screen? It's coming. It's right there now. Yes, now we can okay. see it. And I'm going right. to go off, and you'll be there, and um, we'll have the villages of the Ashtashakis. Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you very much, Pancharatna Prabhu. Very, very nice. And so, devotees, welcome again to our Vrajmandal Parikrama series. And uh, as Pancharatna Prabhu said, today we're going to the villages, the all the villages of all the Astasakis. Yeah, it's really... Uh, it's really something wonderful, actually, that and this is something which many of the devotees, many of our ISKCON devotees, are not really so directly aware of that these villages are there and they're all there and there's temples dedicated to the different Astasakis in the different villages, and it's all still there uh, as part of the culture of Vrajadam. So, all right, let's go. So here we have a little introduction. Srimati Radhika, the daughter of Maharaj Rishabhanu, provides Krishna with complete, absolute spiritual bliss. She is the most beloved of Sri Krishna, and epitomizes Mahabhava, the highest mood of ecstasy, which keeps Sri Krishna spellbound. She expands herself as the Astasakis, her eight female companions. So here we see, here we are in uh, Sri Mayapur Dam. The Astasakis are there with Radha and Madhava. And uh, that's, it's interesting, isn't it? The Astasakis are expansions of Radharani. Each one is an expansion of a particular different aspect of Sh Srimati Radharani's nature and personality. So here, devotees, here you see our satellite image. Uh, this is this is Vrajmandala, one part of Vrajmandala. In the center you see Varshana, the well-known uh, 
town of Srimati Radharani. And here we see the, uh, the villages of the Astasakis in order from one to eight. So number one, you can see there, that's Unchigaon, the village of Lalita Devi. Number two, across on the other side, that's the village of Vishaka Kamai. She is the second of the Astasakis. Then number three, just, just above Kamai, is Kerala, the village of Champaklata, who's the third of the Astasakis. Then number four, you can see just, just at the bottom of Varshana, Chiksoli, the village of Chitradevi, the fourth of the Astasakis. And number five, down, down towards the bottom on the left, Davaro, the village of Tungavidya. Then number six, up towards the top right, Anjanoka, the village of Induleka. And then number seven uh, is Rakoli, right down at the bottom left there. Rakoli, the village of Rangadevi. And then up above that number eight, Sonera is the village of Sudevi, who is the twin sister of Rangadevi, actually. So, yes, you can see how they're all sort of encircling Varshana, which is the place of Radharani. <clears throat> so here we go, devotees. First of all, we're going to Unchigaon, the village of Lalita Devi, who is the leader of the Astasakis. For those of you who may not be so much into Sanskrit, Asta or Ashta means eight. And Saki means female friends. So the eight main female friends of Srimati Radharani, the leaders of all Radharani's gopis. All right, let's, let's go into Unchigan. Uh, well, here, let's introduce Lalita Devi. She's 27 days older than Srimati Radharani and as such is the eldest of Krishna's gopi friends. Her complexion is described as being the color of, yellow, of the yellow pigment garochana, and she dresses in garments like peacock feathers. <clears throat> she's, she's famous for being hot-tempered and contrary by nature, and she teaches Radharani the art of jealous anger. When the arrogant gopis pick a fight with Krishna, she's at the forefront of the conflict. Her special service is serving the divine couple Tambula and Beetle Nuts, and she's assisted by Rupa Manjari. She carries a flower umbe umbrella for Radha Krishna and is expert at decorating them with flowers. She also decorates the cottages where the divine couple rest at night. And Srila Rupa Goswami prays, I offer my respectful obeisances to charming and virtuous Lalita Devi, who worships the perspiration from Shishi Radha Mukunda's feet, and who, out of great love, is very bold and arrogant. I offer my respectful obeisances to charming and virtuous Lalita Devi, who, seeing him even, even slightly cheat Sri Radha with reddened eyes, shames the Prince of Raja with a flood of words. So here we are, uh, coming a bit closer from our satellite. <laughs> and these are the main places in Unchigaon. Actually, Unchigaon, of, of all the Astasakis 
villages. Uh, it has the most places. Yeah, it has the most places. So we're going to go to all these places. You can see here uh, Lalita's temple on top of the hill, Dehakun, the Daoji Balaram temple, etc., etc. So let's get going. So we're going to start uh, in the village itself, going to the temple of Lalita Devi. So here we are, we're entering. <clears throat> and you can see in the distance there, there's a white dome. That's the dome of the temple of Lalita Devi. So here we go, <laughs> making our way through the village and up the stairs we go. And here we are, <clears throat> right in front of Lalita's temple. This is, this is said to be where the palace of Lalita's father was situated. So let's go up and have darshan. And here we are, Shishi Radha Lalita Bihari. And on our left, the small figure there next to Krishna, that is Lalita Devi. A uh, very beautiful little temple, but the deities are nicely cared for. And here, here's an interesting rock. This was found as is when they were excavating to build the temple. And if you look carefully, you'll see on the left there, that's Krishna with his flute. Can you make that out? And then next is Radharani in the center. And then on our right is Lalita Devi. Yeah, there you can see a little more closely. So here we are with our devotees <laughs> explaining about things. And the local devotees give us some uh, roti and sabji, which we distribute to the devotees. Uh, from here, from the Lalita temple, we'll go down to, uh, to the Daoji temple. Yeah. Well, actually, I think, let me just check. We're going to have a look around and see where we're going. First of all, the Daoji temple, which is the dome at the back there. Uh, then <clears throat> Venu Koop, which is the well you can see on the left there. And then into the trees in the center. That's where the Bhajan Kutia and Samadhi of Narayan Bhatta Goswami are. And then we'll go over to Sakigiri Parvat, the hill of the Sakis. And then we'll go to Dehakund. <clears throat> Deha meaning body. Dehakund means that kund where Lalita Devi and the gopis offered everything to Krishna, including their bodies. So here we are at Deha Kund. This is the Kund itself. And here are our devotees taking some water on their heads. And this is Radha Deha Bihari, the presiding deities of the Kund, and these are some other deities. There's a few little temples down there. And now we'll go across to the Daoji temple, the Balaram temple, because Lord Balaram is never far away from Krishna. He's always looking out for Krishna, looking after Krishna. But when Radharani's around, 
Lord Balaram doesn't want to be too close. He wants to give Krishna some, some space to have pastimes with Radharani. So here we are, here the deities of Sri Sri Ravati Balaram. And you can see Balaram is black because he's completely absorbed in meditation on Krishna. But still, this is Balaram. And now let's go down to that, that well, Venukup. You can see down on the left, someone is there with a red shirt on right next to it. So here we are. This was dug by, this is Venukup, means the well which was dug by Krishna's Venu, by Krishna's uh, flute. Krishna's flute is multi-purpose. You can call gopis, call, call cows, and you can dig wells, and you can do all sorts of things. At least Krishna can. So, yeah, you can see all the devotees went out there. But up these stairs here on the right, this will take us into a sacred place, the place of the Bhajan Kutia and Samadhi of Narayan Bhatta Goswami. He was the disciple of one of the six Goswamis and continued their mission of uncovering the lost pastime places of Krishna after they had left this world. On the left there, you can see there's this little brown or red door. Uh, this is the Bhajan Kutia, underground. There are stairs going down underground. That's the Bhajan Kutia of Narayan Bhatta Goswami. And up the top there, up the other stairs, that's his Samadhi. So this is the Samadhi of Narayan Bhatta. Goswami. And down here there's a Ras, a Ras Mandala and we explain some of the pastimes of this place there. Uh, and from here we'll go across to Sakigiri Parvat, the hill of the Sakis. There it is. And here on the side, you can see on the right, about halfway down, there's a shrine. This is the shrine of the Chitra Vichitra Shila. So you know what happened here is that just down under that little shrine, <laughs> what happened was that Radharani was performing a wedding ceremony for Krishna and Lalita. And she became so ecstatic that her veil fell off her head and landed on the rock and the rock melted. And to this day, you can see the pattern, the impression of Srimati Radharani's veil. It's imprinted into the rock here means it's not like someone just painted it on, but it's in the rock. It's actually in the rock. And that's the Chitra Vichitra Shila. Then, so you can see that place there, at the bottom Chitra Vichitra Shila. And just above it is Chapan Katora, the place of the 64 eating bowls of Krishna. Krishna would come here and eat straight off the rock. And you can see those little holes. Krishna would put his different preparations. So they are katoras, they're, they're eating bowls of Lord Krishna. Uh, and the bigger ones there, you can see there for sabjis, maybe some rice, some dal, and the small ones, like you see here, these little ones, different types of chutneys and pickles and, and things of that sort. 
So it's a fascinating place, just fascinating. Yeah, okay. So now from here, we go to number two, you can see on the right, Kamai, the village of Vishaka Devi, who is the second of the Astasakis. So here's the village, and let's go up close. Oh, well, okay. First of all, some glorification and description of Vishaka. Of the Astasakis, Vishaka is second only to Lalita. She appeared at the exact same time as Srimati Radharani. She has a complexion like lightning and dresses in garments decorated with stars. Her father is Pavana, the son of the sister of Mukara Gopi, who's Radharani's grandmother. And her mother is Dakshina Devi, the daughter of Jatila's sister. Vishaka is married to Vahika Gopa. Although more exalted than the younger gopis who perform this service, Vishaka also carries messages between Radha and Krishna. She's expert at dressing and decorating the divine couple. Locatious Vishaka means she speaks very, very expertly, is expert at joking with Lord Govinda, and she is the perfect counselor of the divine couple. She is adept in all aspects of amorous diplomacy, and she knows all the arts of how to conciliate an angered lover, how to bribe him, and how to quarrel with him. Srila Raghunath Das Goswami prays, Vishaka Devi is the place where the youthful divine couple enjoy affectionate and playful joking pastimes. Her sweet transcendental singing eclipses the voices of cuckoos. I pray that Vishaka Devi may become pleased with me and accept me as her student. So here we are, and you can see our little uh, sort of notice there, Vishaka Temple. The actual temple is right at the end of that little sign. You see there's a building there right directly, immediately to our right of that little sign there. That's the Vishaka Temple. Let's go in and have darshan. So here we are in the center, Radha and Krishna. And then on our right, on our right is Sudevi. And then next to, on our left of Sudevi, with the sort of silver colored plate, that's Vishaka. Then on our left uh, of Krishna with the Chamara is Vishaka. And then on the far left, that is Ranga Devi, the twin sister of Sudevi. So let's have a closer look. So Sudevi on our right, then Vishaka. And you can see the devotees are really trying in, in their way to look after the deities nicely. That's Vishaka. And then um, it's Ranga Devi. Ranga Devi on our left. And Lalita with the Chamara. And some of the local Sheilas. And it's an interesting temple. It's a small temple. But it's on two levels. It's really nice, actually. There you can see on two levels with a, a courtyard right down the bottom there. <laughs> really kind of very sweet place. And it's on the banks <clears throat> of Vishaka Kund. This is Vishaka Kund. 
So now the, the third of the Astasakis is Champaklata, and her place is Kerala, which you can see is just above Kamai. So let us, let us learn something about Champaklata. She has a complexion the color of a blossoming champak flower and garments the color of a blue jay's feather. She is the third of the Astasakis and is one day younger than Srimati Radharani. Her parents are Arama and Vatika Devi and her husband is named Chandaksha. Her qualities are very much like those of Vishaka. Chambaglada can carry out her activities cloaked in great secrecy. She's expert in the art of logical persuasion and is a diplomat skilled in thwarting Radharani's rivals. Her special service is fanning the divine couple with a chamara and offering them jeweled necklaces. She's accomplished in the art of fashioning things from clay and is an expert cook, knowledgeable in all the literature describing the art of gourmet cooking. She's famous as Mishta Hashta or Sweet Hands because of her expertise in making different kinds of candy. She's a specialist at collecting fruit flowers and roots from the forest. Champaklata is the leader of the gopis appointed as the protectors of the trees, creepers and bushes of Vrindavan. And her maid servant is Guna Manjari. <laughs> Raghunath Das Goswami prays, when, having learned the art of cooking from Champaklata, will I make my queen, all her dear friends, and Lord Krishna, who by a trick has come at midday to that forest place, uh, when will I uh, make a feast for them so they can enjoy a feast that defeats the taste of nectar? So there are two places here that we'll go to. First is the Champak, Champak Lata Temple. It's that octagonal building. You can see just beneath the little sign there, that octagonal building. Then we'll go across to Vajranab Samadhi. That's interesting, isn't it? The great grandson of Lord Krishna. So we come in early one misty morning and we go to that octagonal temple and we have Darshan of the deities, Radha and Krishna, and on our right is Champaklata. Then, as we said, the other place that we're going to visit here is the Samadhi of Vajranab. It's that shrine just on the left side. Vajranab was the great grandson of Lord Krishna. And immediately after the disappearance of the Lord, he became king in um, Mathura. He was ruling v Vajra, uh, Vraj Mandala. And one of his main services was going around Vraj Mandala, uncovering the different sites of many of the different sites of the pastimes and erecting shrines and sometimes temples there. So this is his samadhi. And from here, so that was number three, Kerala, the village of Champaklata. Now we're going to go to number four, Chitradevi. You can see number four there kind of in the center. And it's an interesting place. 
uh, it's an interesting place. We'll have to explain it a bit to you. You see, uh, that's Varshana at the top there. And on, on the left of center, that's the village of Chiksoli. It's a, a completely separate village. But the temple of Chitra Devi, it's Chitra Devi's village, but the temple is on this, this uh, satellite image at least. It's the tiny little white thing beneath uh, the I and the T of Chitra. Yeah. Oh, there. You can see. Just above the C of Chitra Devi. There. That's, that's where the temple is. And, yeah. So Rupa Goswami describes that Chitra Devi is 26 days younger than Srimati Radharani. Her complexion resembles the color of kumkum, and she dresses in crystal-colored garments. Her father is Chatura, her mother Charchika Devi, and her husband is Pitara. Her service is preparing cloves and flower garlands for Radha and Krishna. Like her father, she's very learned in the astrological sciences. She can read between the lines to perceive the author's hidden intention and is a scholar of many different languages. She's a trained gourmet cook and can identify the ingredients of cooked food preparations merely by glancing at them and makes various kinds of nectarian beverages. She expertly makes music by playing water pots filled with varying degrees of water. She's well-versed in the theory and practice of protecting domestic animals, botany, and in crafting utensils from glass. A skilled gardener, she's the leader of those gopis who collect herbs and creepers with medicinal properties from the forest. Rupa Goswami says that Chitra Devi offers these prayers to Srimati Radharani. My friend, I repeatedly place my head at your feet and beg you to be kind and forgive your lover, Krishna. If you remain displeased and angry with him, then when you once hear the music of his flute on the Yamuna's shore, your peaceful composure will tremble with agitation. Your eyes will become restless, and I will become able to smile at your defeat. <laughs> this is Chitra Devi. Okay, so let's go down. Let's just have a closer look here. Now, we're just approach. This is this is on the Varshana Parikrama path, and we're just approaching Chiksoli, the village, and we come to this narrow gully called Sankari Kor. And up above it, on the left, you see there's a throne right there, just above it. And these are some of the local tax collectors. And this, you see, one time, Krishna was here where this throne is. And the gopis were coming up from our right, from Chiksoli, from Chitra Devi's village, with pots of milk and yogurt on their heads. And Krishna threw a rock from here which knocked Radharani's yogurt pot off her head and it landed on the rock there where that 10 rupee note is. You can see there's a little bit of red. So this is where the yogurt pot of Radharani broke on the rocks. And to this day, the rocks are stained by that yogurt. So, you know what happened then? That there was, there was a fight 
between Krishna and the cowherd boys who were at the back, where all our devotees are gathered, and the gopis who were kind of up in the front here. Big fight. And eventually the gopis retreated down to the village. This is the village of Chiksoli. So we're going down through Sankarikor, through the narrow gully, uh, and some of the local devotees and Radhe Radhe, one enthusiastic local devotee, just on the edge of, of uh, Chiksoli. So, yeah, this is just sort of to explain what's going on here. <clears throat> now, you can see where Chiksoli village is, and you see number four, Sankari Kaur. So, the gopis went from number four back down into the village, and Krishna and the cowherd boys, they, they felt amused, thinking they had defeated the gopis, who are now in Chiksoli. But, so here we are in Chiksoli. But, oh, and here are our gopis, our, our ladies at least, <laughs> going through the village with Kirtan. And what happened was that some minutes later, Krishna and the cowherd boys and Madhu Mangal came down and raided the butter storehouse of Chitra Devi's father. And while they were in there having lots of butter and yogurt, Radharani and Chitra Devi came by and locked the door from the outside. But there was a window open up top and Krishna and the cowherd boys climbed through there. The only one who couldn't fit was the last one, Madhu Mangal, because he eats at least 25 ladus a day. So he got stuck in the window and the gopis came and arrested him and brought him across here to this kun. Then they tied a string to his seeker, threw it over the bran a branch of one of these trees here and took it in turns to pull on his seeker. So as they pulled every time, he called out, Krishna, help! Krishna, help! And finally, Krishna came and told the gopis, you know, you have committed big Brahman Aparad. If you don't watch out, if you don't make up for this, each one of you will become the 99th wife of some grumpy old man. <laughs> so you should, you better do something to pacify Madhu Mangal. So they put Madhu Mangal on this throne. This is the throne of Madhu Mangal and asked him, what can we do to satisfy you? And he said, I want 10,000 ladus. So they ran home, got 10,000 ladus and started feeding them to Madhu Mangal. And after 5,000, <clears throat> Madhu Mangal was feeling a lot better and he started giving blessings. He asked one gopi, what, what would you like? And she said, can I have Krishna as my husband? And he said, tatastu, let it be. And then another gopi came and he asked, what would you like? And she also said, can I have Krishna as my husband? And he said, sure, let it be. In this way, he, he got his 10,000 ladus and the gopis, each one of them got his 
infallible benediction to get Krishna as their husband. And there's our, our Parikrama team, mainly from Russia. So, okay, so that's the village. That's the village and the whole pastime behind it. Now we'll go and visit the temple, which is, as you can see, it's just, it's outside the village, actually. But it is, it is definitely the temple of Chitradevi. It's situated at the bottom of Velasca. Very beautiful hill, very nice hill. It's the head of Lord Vishnu. So in we go for Darshan, and the deities are, as the sign says, Takoshi Chitra Nikunja Bihari Viharani Ju. Takoshi Chitra Nikunja Vihari Viharani Ju. Okay. And there they are, the dear. Well, okay. We, we have a big kirtan. <laughs> and they're the deities. Chitra Nikunja Vihari, that's Krishna. N uh, Nikunja Viharani is Radharani. And on our right, on our right is Chitra Devi. And on our left is Ranga Devi. And as you can see, really looked after just really nicely. And this is Chitra Devi. And Ranga Devi. All right, so now we are going to Davaro, number five, down towards the left there, the village of Tungavidya. It's, it's a nice place. Tungavidya is a celebrated music teacher and an expert singer and veena player. <clears throat> and, oops, here we see her with her veena in her hands. She's the daughter of Pushkara, Pushkara and Maita Devi and is the fifth of the Astasakis. She's 15 days younger than Srimati Radharani and has a complexion like kumkum and wears white garments. <clears throat> the fragrance of her body is a combination of sandalwood and camphor. She's married to Balisha and her service to the divine couple is singing dancing and playing musical instruments. She's hot-tempered and expert at disguise. She has very scholarly nature and is learned in the 18 branches of knowledge, including Rasa Shastra, Niti Shastra, Shastra and Natya Shastra, Shastra. She's the leader of those gopis who are expert at arranging political alliances with rivals and who fetch clear river water. Raghunath Das Goswami says that Tunga Vidya speaks to Srimati Radharani as follows. Radha, this is your dear friend Krishna who has now climbed to the summit of Govardhan, the king of mountains. This is the same passionate Krishna who hid in the darkness and stole the jar of yogurt. This is the great thief of the gopi's property. Yes, yeah, so that's Tunga Vidya. And there's the temple down there. Uh, it's a bridge bussy temple, like a village temple, but it is run by Gaudiya Mutt devotees. And actually, it's small, but it's really beautiful, really nice. And here's the altar. It's Radha and Krishna. On our right, uh, with the lute, is Tunga Vidya. And on our left, with the Chamara, 
is Lalita. Tunga Vidya. And this, this is an old deity of Tunga Vidya. An old deity of Tunga Vidya. There's another temple we'll be going to shortly, which also has an old deity of the particular one of the Astasakis from that place. So here, it's an interesting little area. This hill, you see, they call this Chota Govardhan, Little Govardhan. It was named, given that name by one sadhu who was living here about a hundred years ago. And now just outside of, just away from the temple about three or 400 meters is this hill. And, and look just at the bottom of the picture, you can see some interesting colored shilas. This hill is called the Sham Shila because of the coloring of the rocks. It's really nice. And they say the color represents Radharani, the light color and the dark color, Sham. So here we are on top of the hill, right on top, explaining about the area. It's really beautiful. And here, look at this. They say, this is Krishna's footprint up on the hill. You have to look carefully to find it. It's, there's no shrine or anything. So that was Davaro. Now number six, Anjanoka, the village of Induleka up there top right. So here it is. And Induleka, the sixth of the Astasakis in Duleka is three days younger than Srimati Radharani. She is described as having a tan complexion and wears garments the color of a pomegranate flower. Her parents are Sagara and Vela Devi. And she's married to Durbala. By nature, Induleka is contrary and hot tempered like many of the other Astasakis. She's skilled in the science of palmistry and snake charming using mantras. She's expert in stringing necklaces in the science of gems and weaving various kinds of cloth. You can see in our picture, she's holding a, a box of gems, a golden box of gems. Raghunath Das Goswami prays, May Induleka happily teach me to string necklaces of glittering jewels, guna, jewel, or glittering pearls, guna, jewels, and sumana flowers. In a cottage by Radha's favorite lake, may this person decorate Sri Sri Radha Krishna with these necklaces. Assisted by her maidservant, Rati Manjari, Induleka is the leader of the gopis who present ornaments and garments to Radha and Krishna and guard their treasury. Induleka carries auspicious messages that increase Radha Krishna's mutual attraction. She is fully aware of the divine couple's confidential secrets. So here we are. Um, the temple is right at the end of the village, pretty much. You have to go right through the village. But it's a nice temple and, you know, a nice kund, Kishori kund, the kund of Radharani. So there's a big julan there. And here's the temple. Here's the temple. Let's go in and have darshan. So this is, this is a really interesting place. One time Radharani was having her eyes 
decorated with kajal. Yeah, kajal. Black, which they, ladies and even children, put around their eyes. And you can see here Radha and Krishna on the top. They've got kajal around their eyes. And Indu Lake is on our right. Lalita is on our left. And just sort of beneath Lalita next to Lord Jagannath is Vishaka. Yes, so Indu Lake doing her service for Radha and Krishna. And yes, there you can see very clearly the kajal around their eyes. So Radharani was having, was being dressed and decorated secretly. She didn't want Krishna to see until she was ready. And just when she was having kajal put around her eyes, but there was only kajal around one eye, Krishna came and asked her, well, you know, the Sanskrit for kajal is anjan. And Krishna asked, asked her, where's the anjan on your one eye? And Krishna said, you are niranjan. You are niranjan. You don't have your anjan, your kajal on properly. This is Lalita. She's also got some kajal, some anjan. So then Krishna put Anjan Kajal around the eyes of, of Radharani. And he got that Kajal by rubbing his one finger on a rock that was there. On this rock, as you can see, it says Anjan Shila. What does it say? Kajaroti Shila. Yeah. So Krishna rubbed his finger on this shila and the kajal, the anjan, the black, came off and he applied it to Radharani's other eye. And even now, if you go there, if you rub a finger on this shila, on this rock, you'll get black on your finger. It's the anjan shila. Very, very special. And here's an interesting thing. On the wall here, in, in Hindi, is written the names of all the Astasakis and the names of their villages. You know, we're all the ones we've been to. So let's start from the left, top, Rangadevi Saki, well, is Rakoli, we haven't been there yet, we'll be going there next. Then Sudevi Saki, the village is Sun Sunara, Sunera, we'll be going there last. Then Lalita Saki, Unchagan, we have been there. Then Vishaka Saki, Kamai. <clears throat> then Champaklata Saki, Kerala, we, we were there. And uh, Sri Chitrasaki, Chiksoli, we were there, of course. Then Sri Tungavidyasaki, uh, Dabarao, Dabarao, where we just were. And then Sri Indulekasaki in uh, Anjanok. That's the name of this village, Anjanok, Anjanoka, to do with that Anjan. Yeah, and here's a verse, famous verse. Krishnaya Vasudevaya, Devaki Nandanaya Cha, Nanda Gopa Kumaraya, Govindaya Namo Namaha. So it's a nice place. And on the side, on the right, there is that kund, Kishori kund. All right, so we're almost there, devotees. Uh, next is number seven, Rakoli, the village of Ranga Devi. 
And we just make a brief stop there because it's pretty small. So there it is, Rakoli, the village of Ranga Devi. And let's hear her glories. Described as having a complexion the color of a lotus filament, Sri Ranga Devi is the seventh of the Astasakis. Dressing in garments the shade of a red rose, she's seven days younger than Srimati Radharani. Ranga Devi, along with her twin sister Sudevi, they are the daughters of Rangasara and Karuna Devi. Ranga Devi is married to Bhairava. Her personal qualities are much like those of Champaglata, and she's contrary and hot tempered in nature. She's described as being an ocean of feminine words and gestures. She's very fond of joking with her dear friend Radharani whilst in Krishna's company. Amongst the various activities of diplomacy, she's especially skilled in the art of patiently waiting for the enemy to make the next move. She's an expert logician and due to previous austerities, she has attained a special mantra which can attract Krishna. She's the leader of those gopis who are expert in the use of perfumes and cosmetics in the burning of aromatic incense, carrying coal in the winter and fanning the divine couple in summer. Her friends have the ability to control the jungle lions and deer. Her special service is supplying Radha Krishna with sandalwood paste. Raghunath Das Goswami prays, O oh friend, if she whose name bears the nectar syllables Ranga Devi on my request teaches me the art of dancing, then in the rasa dance I shall place in the mouths of the gracefully dancing divine couple betel nuts to make them even more expert in dancing. So there's the temple right on the edge of the kund. And there's the kund. It's a nice kund. And as you can see here, it's kind of clear. It's, yeah, a lot of the kunds are a bit sort of murky. And this is also slightly murky, but actually it's not so bad. It's somewhat clear. And we go up to the temple and this is, this is a verse here, I won't read it, but it's a verse glorifying Ranga Devi. And so here are the deities on the altar. It's Radha and Krishna with Ranga Devi on our right. And you see the big deity on the left, that's an old deity of Ranga Devi. So there's Radha and Krishna with Ranga Devi on our right. She's very sweet. And this is the old deity of Ranga Devi from, from before some time. So now the last village of the Astasakis, Sonera on the left there, the village of Sudevi, the twin sister of Ranga Devi. So, she's married to Vakrikshana, the younger brother of Ranga Devi's husband. She's sweet and charming by nature. Her form and qualities are so similar to those of her sister that they're often mistaken for each other. You know, I, I could never tell Pankajangri and Janani Vas from each other. Oh, it was not easy. Same thing here. Sudevi always remains beside Radharani, arranging her hair, decorating her eyes and massaging her transcendental body with scented oil. She's expert in training parrots and roosters, sailing, sailing, wow. Oil body massage starting fires, reading omens, horticulture, making leaf spittoons, playing music on bells, and decorating couches. Her service is serving water to the divine couple 
I think that's why she has that big pot there. Sudev, she's the leader of the gopis who act as spies by disguising themselves and moving amongst Radharani's rivals to uncover their secrets. She, they also serve as the deities of the forests of Vrindavan, overseeing the protection of the birds and bees. And Raghunath Das Goswami prays, May Sudevi teach to me the art of dice playing. So when the divine couple play at dice in the assembly of Gokula's beautiful eyebrown girls, with the words of my eyes, I shall declare that she who is the queen of goddesses is the winner. So there's the temple just to the back at the, on the entrance side of the village, basically. And there's a little uh, Shiva temple there. Shiva's there as Dikpal, the protector of, of the temple and the village. And this is the surrounding scenery, and this is the village. And here's the temple, and here we are. This is the Pujari, and behind is the altar. So Radha and Krishna, <clears throat> and on our right is Sudevi, and on our left, is her sister Ranga Devi. So this is Sudevi. And this is Ranga Devi. So Hare Krishna devotees, I hope you found the visit to the Astasakis villages interesting. Maybe we'll take you there sometime in person. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Oh, you're either you're muted or I think you're muted. At least I can't hear you. Okay. Right. Now it's right. okay. Yeah. Right. All right. Um, no, I was just saying that was really extraordinary. And uh, to, to see, see all the Ashtashakis in their deity forms and in, in their different temples, to hear about their transcendental qualities and how they each, each have their special role in, in creating the, the manifesting, I should say, the leela for Krishna. Uh, and and how they're all arranged with uh, Shirada in the center too. How, how their their villages are all surrounding Shirada's <laughs> Harshana. So uh, wonderful, wonderful. And and it, of course it does whet our appetites <laughs> to get the go there. And and uh, how, when you did that parikrama, did you um, how many days? It wasn't one day, I'm sure. No, no. Um, you know, when when we do it, I've done it a number of times. Mm -hmm. the, fir the first time, we just sort of stumbled on them all, wow. actually. It was a, a, more than 10 years ago, about 15 years ago, yeah. But anyway, when we go on Parikrama, uh, we do two villages a day. Okay. Yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. So it's a four-day yatra. Oh yeah, it's and really you do. Nice. But then Varshana, I suppose you also spend some time in that yatra. It's a kind of Radha and Shakti. That's a separate one. Oh, oh yeah, that's a whole big. <laughs> because there's big a, you were pointing out in one of those pictures, you saw the Mankutir and the Morkutir and all those different places that are sure. Radha's special places. We, we've got a. A slideshow of Varshana. Ah, so oh, yeah. we'll have to figure when to schedule that. Maybe uh, Radha Ashtami sometime. Sometime. It's beautiful. It's yeah. just really beautiful. Fantastic. Well, thank you very, very much, Maharaj. And thank you to the whole audience for uh, coming with us on this joyous 
Parikrama, uh, and hearing about these Ashtashakis and hearing about the aspirations that the devotees have to, to assist in the service of Sri Radha and her Shakis. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Please like, share, follow, do everything like that, and uh, uh, get on our mailing list if you aren't already there uh, so that we can continue to provide you this nectar for the eyes and the ears. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Ball. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Hare Krishna. 